Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. With me today is friend of the show and your friend, John Cameron. And our special guest today is again, W. Oh man, I gotta always mess these things up. Mr. W. Bruce Lee, president of the Sacramento Taxpayers Association. And man, it's been a long day, my friend. So we're gonna talk about spend and tax and tax and spend, where will it end? If we look at your ballot measures, again, you go down and you see money allocation, taxes, fees, whatever, down the whole thing, essentially, for those of us in Sacramento County. We got from Carmichael Park and Rec, to Elk Grove General Sales Tax, Alverta, Galt, uh, Mr. Bruce here, Mr. Bruce. Mr. Lee here will talk to us about Measure A a little bit. I know you heard us last week when we got mm -hmm. into a deeper discussion about Measure A, but John wasn't here for that, so we're gonna get John here a, a refresher on Measure A. But the, the bigger question is, how much taxes can you know the average person really afford these days? I mean, is this, when does it all end? I mean, how much can really, in the time of economic hardships, right, where so many of us are having economic hardships, how can we continue to pass these taxes, and how can our politicians just, with good conscience, continue to put these things on the ballot? I, that's my biggest question, really, is how can these politicians and taxpayers in good conscience put these things on the ballot when they're not spending the money they already get properly. I mean, I think that's, for me, you that's kind of what my frustration. You put a qualifier in properly. You well, know, you, yeah. can't, you, can't, you can't have quality standards. I mean, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you know? that's, that's private sector. What are you talking about? No, I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, in, 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 give me an example. In England, they're talking about whacking 10% of the public workforce because it's gotten bloated. Hardly a ripple in the press, other than by some, uh, some, uh, some labor publications. There's not uproar in the streets. There's not rioting. There's not uh, uh, you know, death threats. There's not all the rest of that because, well, you know, yeah, we, we have grown public employment and it costs us a lot of money. You know, let's, let's look at it, if you know, I had to let somebody go in my little donut shop because business is slow. Why don't we cut some of that, that public? Here, can you imagine what would happen in the state of California if Governor Newsom says, times are tight. You know, the businesses that actually do something and make something and create wealth, they're laying people off, they're not hiring, they're tightening their belt, they're not buying new buildings, they're doing without, they're deferring maintenance and all the rest of that. One of the places we can cut is uh, the number of employees for the state of California. What, what would happen? What would happen? Well, I think you have a number of reactions mm -hmm. uh, from the labor unions and the, uh, uh, that are ferociously defend the role mm. of the uh, uh, public employee in the state. There'd be uh, outrage. Now, not too many years ago, uh, we actually, though, did do, uh, and it wasn't layoffs, but there was a curtailing of hiring, mm. and there were the uh, furlough days, mm. mandatory furlough days, where you mm. cut back and pay uh, 1.5%, another point, I think, of 10%. But you gave it all back later. No, hmm? uh, I don't think so. The most recent ones they did, Maybe and then some. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because on a furlough day, you didn't work. Mm. And if you weren't working, you weren't earning. Uh, mm. So we could look into the details of mm. that. Yeah, there would be um, concerns by uh, certain sectors of the, uh, the state community. Other parts of the state community would go, hey, about time. Yippio, you know, yippio, you know, how does that go? Yippio Kaye. Yippio Kaye. I'm not sure who, who can be attributed to that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> hop along Cassidy, I'm not sure. Well, well. Uh, We're dating ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce. Uh, well, Bruce Willis, but you can't Bruce say the Willis. rest of it from Bruce Willis's version. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, all right. You know, yeah, there's, yeah. The, there's the, that part of that. Well, anyway, but I just threw that out as kind of a general, mm -hmm. you know, we have, we, we, I think we all agree that there's some bloat. Yeah. And, and, and that there's, uh, uh, you know, that, that there's people who, you know, really want to control their patch. And then there's, as you pointed out um, in a conversation we had, around the table, around the triangular table, mm -hmm. that, that a lot of people believe passionately in some of these causes. 
and oh. don't really care because what was the point you made about whose money it is? Yeah, yeah. whose money it is. It's, um, and I used an illustration, I think, in the prior show of uh, some educators saying, well, hey, I think there's a lot of waste in, in funding of the uh, food program uh, for the uh, needy children, which is a, it's a good program, not speaking against that. But uh, there's a lot of overspending that's not necessary. Individuals that don't qualify are getting mm -hmm. free food, et cetera. And their response was, oh, we don't care. Because it, it, what we would term as the true believers, but it's not their money that's being spent. It's someone else's money that's mm. being spent. If it was their money being spent, then they would be much more concerned. Mm. And that's this whole, matter of fact, that's a, you, you look at healthcare, and I'll just segue in it briefly. Mm -hmm. One of the fundamental problems we have with healthcare, and we talk about the rising costs of healthcare, is that, um, uh, if, well, let's say if I took my car into the sh automobile shop, they said it's going to be $500 to replace the, uh, uh, the radiator. I said, okay. And then they did that and get it back, and it, the radiator doesn't work, you know, and the car blows up. I'd go back to the shop and say, hey, you know, I want my $500 back, and I want a new radiator too, a new car. Mm. But in our healthcare system, uh, since the average person is not spending their money, mm. they're spending the government's money mm -hmm. or insurance carrier's money, et cetera. They want you know, the, the best that they possibly can have, or whatever the cost might be. And if something goes awry, who do they complain to? Someone goes into a hospital, gets sepsis and dies. Well, who, you know, who do I, you know, I go to the hospital and say, hey, I want you know, my uh, $5,000 surgery refunded or, or whatever. There's no accountability there. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's a plague that we have in our government as well in many of our programs. Mm -hmm. I've absolutely, I've, I've, we've, we've discussed uh, third party pay. You know, mm -hmm. basically we don't have health care in this country now. We have prepaid health care. Mm -hmm. We don't have health insurance. We have prepaid health care. We're, I don't know, we're of an age I'm guessing. And I remember when uh, you had savings to pay for um, visits to the doctor, that doctors mm -hmm. came to people's houses, mm -hmm. and that uh, when something major happened, that's what health insurance was for, to cover the major mm -hmm. thing. But the rest was paid quite comfortably for middle class people mm -hmm. out of savings that mm -hmm. they had. And health care costs were um, a tenth or twelfth of what they are now. We're spending 18 percent of GDP on health care mm -hmm. uh, for you know, I think it could be better. The only country in the world that spends anywhere near what we do on health as a percentage of GDP is the Swiss. They get some mighty fine health care for their money. Mm. Yeah. All so, right. Yeah. Well, the Swiss, once again, are uh, leading the way. Uh, yes, think, they, they all are. <laughs> it goes to show you that spending money isn't actually going to equal yeah. a good no. outcome, right? Yeah. We spend 18% of our GDP, and our GDP is, uh, you know, mm. huge. Well, it's inflated dollars, yeah, too. It's, inflated. it's not really... Yeah. But and we spend yeah. half our general fund on education. And we get... But we're still at the bottom of the list mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, quality education. Mm. So, so clearly money, actually yeah. having enough money isn't actually mm. the problem. Well, it's enough. Is it's having too much money because if you have less money, yeah. you figure out a way to do the job with less money. That's why yes. you, know, you, you advise anybody going into business, especially if they have means, to set aside $100,000 for this new business venture and if it, it goes to ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars, uh, start putting the business close sign out mm -hmm. before you spend that last dollar. But that that doesn't happen with these schools. I, I guarantee you that you could whack fifty percent of people in administration, especially at the college and the university mm -hmm. level, in public sector, not private mm -hmm. sector. Mm -hmm. And, and do a bang-up job, yeah. So more money does not equal more, more performance. Throwing money at a problem is the easy solution. Mm. We do have a, a problem with leadership mm. and good management. Now, I, I'm shocked I, by that, Bruce, I'm you're, shocked. You're, you're by shocked that. by that, you're Not stunned. at all. You mm. never observed that. Uh, you know, and I, I must say, uh, and I have a managerial background myself, and I have a bit of a belief that even public managers if they have the right motivation and the right tenacity, can require and uh, get better levels of performance mm. from their public sector employees, mm. 
if they establish that as the culture and the norm mm -hmm. and reward productive behavior and uh, disincentivize uh, uh, la lazy behavior. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's a structural issue. Uh, it can be done, but uh, there are many forces working against mm. the, the average manager. Especially in, in uh, state service. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, you know what's interesting? I, have, I come from a family that uh, has a lot of people who work in state. And they know who the bad employees are. Oh, they yeah. know who should be fired and who shouldn't be. Absolutely. But yet, it doesn't get done. Mm. And some people complain because it's, it's a long, difficult process to fire mm -hmm. somebody. But then it's just easier to move them somewhere else. Mm. Absolutely. And just shovel them. Or in many them cases, out. unfortunately, promote them out. If you get rid of them. Yeah, as long as you get yeah. rid of them. Right? They're no longer my problem. So yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and in teaching. And then we should probably talk about what we said we're going to talk about <laughs> on the show uh, at some point. But yeah, yeah, well, it happens and, to us all the time, yeah. John. So yeah. in, in teaching. Everyone will tell you that a great teacher can teach one and a half years worth of curriculum, sometimes two in one school year, mm -hmm. and that a bad teacher can barely teach a half a year's curriculum in school. Mm -hmm. But which teacher is paid more? It doesn't matter what the performance is. It's the no. one who's been a teacher for longer. Yeah. And which teacher can you fire? Neither one of them, yeah. because they're teachers. That's so true. So you know, what the heck. And, and until we get some accountability in, not only accountability, but a definition of, uh, you got to define the project. A lot of these projects, it said, yeah, I'm, he said, I'm all in favor of education. You got to write down what in the heck that means mm -hmm. before you start throwing money at it. So now we should, I'm sorry. To, no, no, I, yeah, I, I, I just yeah. When we talk about accountability, accountability doesn't necessarily mean punishment. It doesn't necessarily no. mean people need no. to be fired. Sometimes it's just, hey, you're not in the right job. We can find you a, a job over there that's better yeah. suited to your skills yeah. or your personality type. Or you're not suited for this particular team, but you have valuable skills that can be used over there. No, I, I have said, I, I use the, I use the negative here, but, you know, most people leave an organization not, not because they were, um, it's because they weren't caught doing things right. Because the only time they interacted with their managers, they did something wrong. Yes. And, and, and that's the only attention they got. And like we know, we've all raised kids. Uh, if the only attention you're giving your kid is when they've done something wrong, they're going to do things wrong to get your attention. And most of, them are just, most of us are just slightly grown-up kids. Well, the yeah. average level or quality of the average manager in state service, mm -hmm. I would say, is probably modest. I mean, these are good people, mm -hmm. but their average, they're not necessarily groomed or uh, trained for mm -hmm. these roles. It, it's like take a salesman. He's a great salesman. Okay, we're going to make you manager of the sales force. I mean, the mm -hmm. manager of the sales force. Now we're going to make you a VP of sales. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that old Peter principle yeah. uh, promoted to your point of incompetence. But, you know, uh, I, I would not uh, evaluate our typical management style, highly effective within state service. No. Yeah, well, this is interesting. We've kind of delved into a, a question of leadership, and uh -huh. but it's actually a good discussion to have because leadership is a complicated thing. Mm -hmm. But it's also not. You know, the <laughs> fundamental leadership skills, they're, they're difficult to perfect, but yeah. in practice, they're easy to practice. They're easy mm -hmm. to, to try. Well, there's, so, uh, there's, I think I'm, I'm going to disagree. They're would, simple. Would, yeah. they're, they're simple. simple. They're yes. not easy. So well, they're, they're simple, not but, easy. Well, they're, they're simple to execute. They're no, difficult to execute, simple to understand, right? Yeah. Maybe that's, yeah. No, that's, they're, that, that's, uh, you know, it's the, the, the analogy I use, and people, there are people who throw things at me when I say it now, they've heard it so often, is that, okay, <coughs> um, all of us can run a little bit, right? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Running a four minute mile is simply running faster. Yes. It wasn't until 1956 that anybody did it. And then once one person did it, six weeks later, when they realized that it wasn't a physical limitation, the second person did it. But you know, there's a, there's a big difference between simple and easy. And, and almost all of it comes down to courage. But um, you know what the heck, maybe we should talk about something no, well, on the I list. Really I, we keep going sideways. Yeah. I, I'm, well, I'm sorry, I'm taking us there too. Hey, I, it's no, my it's fault. It's it's my, what, what we're I doing apologize. is we're talking about these topics and then we go down to the root issues. Yeah. Well, we talk yeah. about sideways, but the sideways <coughs> sometimes end up being better discussions. Because um, as Bruce was saying, we, people become good at a job and so you get promoted into another one and then you get promoted into a leadership position, but no one trains us how to be a leader. They just simply, well, you can do the job, so now you lead these. Now your job is to no longer do the job. Now your job is to lead the people who do the job. 
but they haven't been trained to lead mm. the people who do the oh. job. And so we wonder why they, they fail. We wonder why they're not good mm. at it. Uh -oh. And that's and true in the public and the private sector. Yes. Yeah. And then one of you know what I always have. I'm not going to have the last word on this because I want us to actually talk. I don't. I haven't. I want to hear your expertise on these actual measures. I would like to see what you think of them because I haven't done the kind of research on them that you have. And well, also, Bruce, I'm you were you we were sitting here. If John had been here last week, he would have heard your explanation of Measure A. Do you want to kind of give your your quick explanation of Measure A? Well, you know, there are a number of things that you need to look for in a any tax any tax measure. And oh, I want to say this, uh, SAC tax approach to taxes is not that, ooh, mm, tax, mm, tax bad, mm, you know, all taxes, because we need taxation. Mm. You know, there's legitimate functions we need to perform. But there are things you can look at any particular tax. Uh, is it precise as to what's going to be accomplished? Mm. Is there a time frame for that? Clearly defined project. Is it clearly defined? Is it clearly defined? Uh, is there a nexus? And one of my pet peeves is I'm going to tax people that, whatever, have swimming pools uh, in order to uh, build homeless shelters. Mm. Uh, well, there's no relationship to this at all. Sure there is. You know, <laughs> you know, so is there a nexus that relates the two? I think that's a criteria for a good tax. And there are many other things. Uh, such as accountability. So when you have a tax such as Measure A, uh, which is the on the November ballot uh, for uh, half a percent sales tax, and I tried to avoid saying half cent because that doesn't sound like much, mm. but frankly when you get a half a percent added to what is already happening, say in Sacramento mm. City and other parts of the county, you're getting up to the point of spending 10 cents of every dollar on a tax. Mm. You know, or, or or ten dollars out of a hundred, you know, mm. on a tax, and they begin to look at it that way. Hundred out of a thousand, a thousand out of ten thousand, it it adds up. It it, it adds yeah. up. Yeah, and uh, that is the most regressive kind of tax, even though VAT in England nobody blinks an eye at because they mm -hmm. accept it, but who's hit the worst by that tax increase is people who buy stuff at the store. Low low income, uh, yeah. middle income, and of course, right in the middle of an inflation storm going mm. on, and uh, uh, after a pandemic and this type of thing, so it's. Yeah, some timing issues here too. Mm -hmm. But while there are a dozen things really wrong with Measure A, being regressive and et cetera, et cetera, it, it, it really is a, 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 a Trojan horse. It's, it's duping the people. So you have special interests who have uh, sponsored uh, $1.7 million to collect the signatures to put this on the ballot. Mm -hmm. And they call it a citizen's ballot. They paid an average twenty-two dollars and twenty-five cents per signature. Mm. Now, if you have a lot of money, you can put something on the ballot. Uh, and in this regard, uh, again, there's a lot of sprinkling of uh, Christmas tree ornaments. Well, mm. we'll do this and do that for transportation, and it says nothing about you know, what has the city or the county done or not done with previous money. This mm. is just all new money, and the big thrust of Measure A is to have a connector between uh, Highway uh, 99 and Highway 50, mm. the Southeast Connector. That is the big plum. That was defeated a few years ago in 2016. In 2020, it was brought back again by the Sacramento Transportation Authority. Uh, SAC tax opposed it, along with others in our coalition, a very broad coalition. And uh, the, the Transportation Authority literally at the last moment in July of 2020 withdrew it from the ballot because they said, hey, if there's any opposition, it's not going to pass. But in the last uh, two or three years, the Supreme Court opined that if it's Supreme Court of California, of California or U.S. Supreme Court? California. They, yeah. they opined and said, well, you know, if it's a, because we, we have a, if it's a general purpose tax, it's a majority vote under Prop 218. If it's a special purpose tax, then it's a two-thirds vote. Mm -hmm. And the court of Pinus, well, you know, if it's a citizen's initiative, then maybe you won't apply that two-thirds. And so here the race was on, and I could go into more detail about all that. So the developers, and this is happening in three or four places in California, say, ah, this is a loophole we can get through and put this on with a simple majority. We'll up front, 1.8 million to get the signatures. 
we'll do the campaign to mm. tell everybody how wonderful it is. And, uh, uh, and then we're going to get the public to fund this new connector so we can develop that land out there. Mm. Now, back in April, a study was done uh, by SACOG and it was validated by three or four universities independently that came along and said, hey, this is a very bad idea because this violates the 2020 SACOG uh, regional planning program of six counties. Mm. And this proposal now, well, two years ago, the big plum was that one project. This proposal now has 26 projects that violate the SACOG plan for good solid regional planning. And they said, we're gonna have land use development that uh, is going to exasperate greenhouse gas emissions, longer commutes, longer this, et cetera. And we will miss our 2035 uh, uh, greenhouse gas reduction goals. Mm. Therefore, we're gonna be missing billions of dollars in state and federal funding for infrastructure, roads, mm. and for, for housing. So th there's a number of things wrong with this whole thing. Mm. It's a duping of the people. Uh, it's not a citizen's initiative. It's benefiting special interests. Uh, you have the environmental impact on this and um, a, a few other things along yeah. the whole way. Yeah. Okay. We had a whole show the other day. Yeah, obviously. we had a whole show. We spent, we spent half, well, half, I'm, half, I'm, half you an know, hour on Measure A. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> let me see how to put this. Uh, I don't care. No, I'm... Um, you know, one of the biggest problems in the state of California is that um, people can't afford to live here. Yeah. And they can't afford to live here because of all the barriers that are in the way of, of housing and development. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I'm not going to say I want to live in Houston. I'm, I'm not going to say I want to live in some of these places. I, I mostly wouldn't live in Houston. Delightful people. I love people in Texas, even if they are just pretending to be nice. I don't care. Pretend away. It's I feel like you're being nice. Um, but Houston's like a sauna, only hotter in the summer. It's terrible. But housing costs are low because they don't have all the barriers to <laughs> building that we do here. They virtually don't have any zoning. Mm -hmm. And it might not be pretty, but you know, with all the people who, who are literally, you talk about greenhouse gases, there's a lot of people in the Bay Area that are working for peanuts. They're commuting two hours a day mm -hmm. for a $20 or $25 an hour job. That can't be good for the environment. So, you know, the, the, if, you know, all of these things that I look at and I say, yeah, regional planning is nice and, and, and clean air is nice, but, you know, I lived in a smoggy environment before and, if some of these people who are living on the streets could, you know, actually pull down a minimum wage job and, and afford to rent a room somewhere, that would be a great life. But, you know, with all these plans and, 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 uh, and barriers to growth, not going to happen. So I'm not saying I'm for it, but I can, I can understand why some people, even if they're not making money off of it as developers, would be in, in favor of it. So... I well, I myself would be someone who's you know in favor of actually building more houses and getting getting places that's cheaper to build. But I don't think in this particular case, I don't think we're going to end up with things that are cheaper mm. to build. In well, no, because yeah. that's what ninety thousand dollars just to get a permit to build a house. I mean, yeah. that's yeah. on top See, of that's, yeah, that's just the start. Those those are some things when it comes to the cost of housing. It is the permitting requirements. It is all these things. You used to be able to build a home, a very nice home, in four months. Mm. And then look at construction and say, no, okay, now. Five years. You know, <laughs> et cetera, longer, six months, eight mm -hmm. months, nine mm -hmm. months, a year, et cetera. Yeah. But just think of the word permit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the permit means permission. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you permission to build your house on your land with your money, and you're going to pay me $90,000 so that I permit you mm -hmm. I understand, yeah. to, to build your house on your land yeah. with your money, but only in the way that I permit you to build it. Right. You can't build uh, the fairy tale castle that you wanted to because it might hurt your neighbor's feelings. 
Well, I, I uh, well understand where you're coming from there. <laughs> what I, I guess the main point here. And I'm, you know what? This I'm going to apologize to our thousands of viewers out there. I see the phones lighting up because I keep taking the show sideways, and I'm just going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the, the mega point here is that in Measure A, yeah. there's some something for everyone to hate. Yeah. And we have a very unusual coalition because you have taxpayers, you for the various reasons, you have environmental groups for various reasons, you have disadvantaged groups for mm -hmm. various reasons, mm -hmm. and uh, it is something, it's a, it's a taking of public funds mm. under a guise of being a citizen's initiative mm. to ben benefit a special few mm. and their profits. Yes, yeah, so even those of us who might support the theory behind the East Connector, yeah. is the, the, this particular plan for it is now, they've been pushing this that, that connector between 99 and, yeah. and 50 for long 20 time. years, yeah, something long like time. that? Yeah. Well, it would yeah. help because people wouldn't have to go all the way downtown then go up to go up to 50. It would actually help traffic in yeah. my area. Well, but, may, maybe it would, uh, uh, the abattoir that is 99 south out of downtown would maybe be less of an abattoir, but a, a slaughterhouse. But I don't think so. There would be just be... A different slaughterhouse. It just moved yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. Well, because we're growing. But right. so it's, no, no, there are a few other other measures on the ballot. Yeah, we've got two minutes, so wait, is there anything <laughs> you want to cover there? <laughs> 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 we've blabbered on for 25 My minutes. My fault. I think I owe you guys a show. Anything no, you no. all want to cover while we're here? You know, I, 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 I What's the worst of them? Pick well, out the, your, the your the bottom worst one. The worst of them, in my opinion, is Measure A, because it's wrong in so many reasons. Yeah. Uh, you have the Twin Rivers uh, proposals, uh, and uh, I'd recommend opposing that too. They have failed to use their money wisely historically mm. in previous bond measures. Mm. Worse than Sac City? I, 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 I will take <laughs> the fifth on that. <laughs> uh, the, um, you know, uh, particular facilities that they were going to build through previous bond measures, mm. they decided not to build. Uh, they, I think, spent $8.6 million and one developer or a contractor said, okay, we'll pay you this, but just don't build it. I mean, it, so everything has its own reason as to why it's mm -hmm. maybe... It's, so it's this one, smells. Letting, letting these people have more money is a bad idea, basically. Yeah, yeah I think that's, that'd be it. And then you, ha you find things like the, uh, the Oak Grove measure. Okay, so here you have a 1% revenue increase uh, just like Citrus Heights tried back in 2020. Mm. And, you know, what I hear them saying is that, oh, we need some more money, oh, the wall is us, et cetera, et cetera. But interesting enough, when we defeated Measure M two years ago in Citrus Heights, and there was doom and gloom, I could do a whole show on that. Uh, on the aftermath now, Citrus Heights says, we actually made money. We didn't need that tax. Mm. Everyone said we needed this tax. But now we got more money, and they laid off like 20 police officers just to be spiteful. Oh, that's what they do. Yeah. Lay off cops. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and they said, we didn't lay off have, any high-level bureaucrats, we, though, did no, they? they? We didn't, we don't need, did not need to lay those out, the Audits Now show, et cetera. Yep. So, and, but we need, yeah. to, we need to end the show because yeah. we are out of time. Thank you, Bruce, for being here. Thank you, John, for being here again. We want to thank you for watching. And please remember to vote on your own November. And, and for read, yeah. read all these with us, Skepton. Whether, whether you're for it or against it, read it with skepticism. So now we get to sit here Who's the stated beneficiary? Normally, I would. Yeah. Yeah. They actually they became the SAC tax uh, back in 2014. They, did, they wanted to have a 51% uh, business uh, improvement district act uh, assessment. Uh, we actually had to go to court over that with them. And this time we came back and said, we don't want to do this again. So this is a bond measure. It requires a two-thirds vote. Mm. They need 90 million, but they're only asking for 30. Uh, we're going to have an, an active citizen oversight with some teeth because we require that. And, and, and the SAC tax is neutral on this. And they said, you know, just don't, you know. But, you know, we think there is an honest need and it needs to go before the voters to have an honest vote. And it's a two-thirds vote. Uh, so I, kudos to them for what I say, doing it right. Mm. Yeah, so if you're going to do it, so at least since, you do the process. Probably. Since you it's are the point. expert. Yeah. And we are still on, by the way. Are we? The, yeah, the bulletin board didn't go off, so we're back on. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. Yeah, we're still on. Oh, so, anyway, right, yeah. They, 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 I got a question. I got a question on the, the ones that aren't on this list, the 27 and 28, which they've spent 
for, and I think our viewers, because they've seen commercials on them on every single show on TV uh, and radio. A no. thousand times. Yeah. All right. And I, I want, no, I want you to tell me, because uh, even if we are off the air, um, it's crazy. I mean, in, in supposedly the polling says that.